ladies, I'm Trina Titus Lozano, pastoral counselor, licensed and ordained Christian minister. And this is the Her Show, Home Experience Radio. I'm here with you every Friday morning on Life Network for Women. And I co-authored this book with my mother. This is the Home Experience book. Debbie Titus is my mom and she's the author and I wrote it with her and it is a handbook, a manual, a textbook, if you will, to make your home a place of love and peace. And I am doing this parenting series, the ABCs, the absolute basic criteria for raising the next Christian generation, the absolute basic criteria for positive results parenting. Okay, this is what we're looking for. We want positive results. I've been married for 38 years have four grown children and 11 grandchildren. So these are principles that I put together that I learned from my grandmother, my mother, and now I'm passing them down from my children to my grandchildren. And I really truly believe that these are the absolute basic criteria. I think every single one of these character qualities is so important for you to adapt in your own life and then for you to train your children. So be sure to catch all of the episodes because I'm building each one and it's building blocks, but it's all set on a very good foundation of number one, A, A is for authority, but even more importantly, A is for attachment. Starting with the letter A, we've got to attach very, very well to our children. We want to bond so well with our children that our children will want to obey us because they have given us their heart. We gave them our heart and they have given us their heart. And when they are raised in an environment of peace and love, this is an environment in your home that is conducive to attachment. And so this is the letter O today, and O is for obedience. Obedience is a very important character quality for us to teach our children. And yes, we do have to teach them the word obey. We have to teach them how to obey, and we have to have an expectation that they will be obedient. Now, a lot of you uh, understand the importance of obedience training your dog, <laughs> Okay, but what about the importance of obedience training your children? It's basically the same type of thing. You you put you put a an, an instruction out there, and they are able to obey it because they've been trained, they've been taught, they've been rewarded, they've been trained. But they know they can obey when you tell them what to do. They can do it. They've been trained, and they're well trained. You will enjoy your kids more when they are well-trained. You will enjoy your dogs more when they are well-trained. But we're talking about children today. And uh, so we want to obedience train our children. So let's get started. Okay, Ephesians chapter 6 says, Children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. This is the right thing to do. Okay, verse 2 says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. Uh, verse 3 says, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way that you treat them, but rather bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Okay, so fathers and mothers, when we are disciplining and obedience training our children, it is very important that we're not provoking them, okay? We want to come from a place of honor. We want to teach them to honor us because why? Because we want things to go well with them. We want them to live long and it's important that they honor us and they won't know how to honor us if we don't teach them to. One way that you teach them is by example. If you're honoring your parents, their grandparents, there, there's a better chance that they're going to honor you. Okay, so be sure that when you're talking about your parents, when you're talking about your in-laws, that you are honoring them, okay? This is you being obedient to the Lord. If you are being obedient to the word of God and honoring your parents. So backing up to the beginning of this chapter, uh, children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. Now, the children, your children are going to obey you because they belong to the Lord and because it's the right thing to do. Teach your children that they belong to the Lord. You may have already dedicated them to the Lord, maybe a dedication service. Uh, you've prayed over them. You understand they are a gift from God 
And so you want to give them back to the Lord, but you want to present them to the Lord as children that you have trained to be obedient. Okay, I love to spoil my children. I love to say yes, and I certainly love to spoil my grandchildren. So I like to spoil them with goodies and shopping trips and candy and fun and swimming and movies and popsicles and anything that is just fun. I like to have fun. I like to make every day like a party. It's just a lot of fun to have sleepovers and and popcorn and goodies. I like that. However, there's a time where I give them a, a specific instruction and they have to obey. And they know that I'm the boss and I mean business. Okay, for instance, if I have a two-year-old that is eating a popsicle, they have to sit in the high chair. I don't threaten them, but it isn't negotiable. Okay, but they're not going to want to sit in the high chair. Okay, they're going to want to walk around with that popsicle. They're probably going to want to eat it in the living room, sitting on the couch, watching a movie, but they're not allowed. So they must sit in the high chair. There's no threat. I just say, ah, Nina said you have to sit in the high chair. If they, if they bow their back, nah, I don't want to. Okay, then no popsicle, you know, because the pot, if you eat the popsicle, you have to sit in the high chair. So I sit the popsicle on the high chair tray. The popsicle is sitting there. If they want to eat it, they have to sit in the high chair. Again, this is not negotiable. And then I'll pick them up and I'll say, Nina said, you sit here. Say, okay, Nina. And they, they have to submit to me, okay? They have to sit there. And as soon as they will bend at the waist and start putting their legs in, I praise them immediately. Oh, hooray, you obeyed. You obeyed, Nina. I'm so proud of you. Okay, you can sit here and eat your popsicle and we'll get down as soon as you're all done. And so they sit there and, and I sit by them, you know, so we can have some fun conversation while they're eating. But the fact of the matter is that I'm the boss. Okay, they don't get to choose where they're going to eat their food. They eat their food where I say they're eating their food at the table, at the high chair, whatever it is, because I am the authority. I've established that I'm the authority and I teach them to obey, but without a threat. It's very important that I don't use a threat, like saying, if you don't sit here, then I'm calling your mommy and you have to go home. Well, see, I've already established the schedule with their mom and they're not going home right now. They're not gonna go home until tomorrow. So they're gonna stay here. So I would never make a threat that I wouldn't follow through on. And there's, that's, that's now putting the child in charge of our schedule. If they obey, then, then, you know, we do what we're supposed to. But if they don't obey, well, now they're in charge of the schedule. No, they're not. So don't ever say things like, okay, well, if you do that, then if you don't obey, then we're not going to the park. Well, yeah, we are. We're going to the park. I've already told all the other children that we're going to the park. So they have to obey no matter what. So do not put a threat out there. Or you don't want to say, well, if you don't obey, then we're leaving right now. What? We're not planning on leaving right now. So please do not threaten that. I, when I'm in public, I hear this all the time. A mom will be in the grocery store. A mom will be at the playground. And they'll tell their, their screaming child, uh, or a child that's throwing a tantrum or wanting something, um, okay, if you don't stop that, then we're leaving right now. No, make them obey because you need to finish grocery shopping. Make them obey because you leave the park when you say it's time to leave the park. So, so settle them, get down on their level and say, you, you'll have to change your voice to a little bit more of an authoritative sound and say, in my case, I say, Nina, Nina said, you obey. You stop screaming right now. That's the wrong voice. You have a good attitude. We're going to have fun. We came here to have fun. So we're going to have fun now. Okay, come on. It's time to have fun. Here's a tissue. Obey Nina. Let's have fun. And we'll go home when it's time. Uh, okay, this is very important. Obedience, train your children without giving a threat and without giving options. They need to do what you're telling them to do. Now, that being said, don't tell them too much. Okay, I don't want them to be, to be constantly having to be bossed around, be constantly having to obey so many rules more than they can even handle. Okay, so tell them one thing at a time, one instruction. Make sure that it's an important instruction that you're willing to follow through with. Okay, it's got to be an important instruction and you stick with it until they obey you. Okay, don't back down. Now, they're strong-willed, but you have to be more strong-willed because there's going to be a power struggle many times. But you've got to win the battle. Okay, this is very important. They have to obey you. You don't need to bribe them. 
You don't need to threaten them. They simply need to obey you. Okay, I have some tips here for you to help obedience train your children, okay? Um, and hopefully this, this is gonna be a blessing to you. Okay, first of all, let's get our why. Why are you obe obedience training your children? Because they will be a blessing to you. They will be a blessing to the Lord. They will be a blessing to everyone that's around them. And they will most importantly be a blessing to themselves if they do not have out of control anger. So if we are if we are raising self-centered, entitled children that are controlling and aggressive and want their way, they have to understand they just don't get that, okay? None of us do. So you can't back down. Please don't back down. Don't worry about if you feel like you're being too bossy, okay? You have to obedience train your children. So here's some tips. Okay, number one, give a clear instruction. In other words, you want to tell them what to do, not just what not to do. For instance, if you need your child to walk, don't say to them, don't run. Okay, you say, Levi, walk. There you go. There's a clear instruction. If you need your child to take their feet off the furniture, you say, Please take your feet off the furniture right now. Okay, so there's a clear instruction. You told them what to do and when to do it. Um, instead of saying, don't put your feet on the furniture. Okay, you told them what not to do, but that's never as productive as telling them what to do. Would you please put your shoes by the front door right now? Okay, it's clear instruction, and then you stand there and make sure that they follow through with that. Okay, they've got to follow through all the way. So don't give them an instruction and then walk away and then be mad when you come back a few minutes later and they haven't done it. Follow through and make sure that you are obedience training well. They, they need to do what you're telling them to do, and they need to do it now. Because for it to be really obedience, it needs to be right away, okay, and all the way. So I always say obedience is joyfully, immediately, and completely. Okay, so they need to have a good attitude. Now, my kids, if they, if I told them what to do, like take your dishes to the sink, and they went, oh, I would say, oh, well, that's not a very good attitude. So now I'm going to add one more job. Take your dishes to the sink and take out the garbage. Oh, mom. Oh, okay. Take your dishes to the sink take out the garbage, and wipe off the countertops. Yes, ma'am? Because if you keep having a bad attitude, I'm adding one more job. Yes, ma'am? Okay, mommy? You know, and I would require them to repeat after me, either saying, okay, mommy, or say, yes, ma'am, or with my grandkids, I want them to say, okay, Nina, or yes, ma'am. But I need to hear a response, and they have to understand there's an expectation of joyfully, immediately, and completely. So I'm following through with my instruction so that they know that they I'm expecting these three things, and that's what makes it true obedience. Okay, so account for the child's age. Now, I will not expect the same thing from my 2-year-old grandchild as I would expect from my 11-year-old grandchild or my 14-year-old grandchild. You know, it's, it's going to be a lot different. So I have to adjust the instruction for the age, and you do too. Because in our family, there's always the age range of children. And it's not right for you to expect the younger children to do the same things as the, as the older children. And it's not right for you to expect any of the children to do something that you yourself don't even do. So you expect them to keep their room clean. <clears throat> What does your room look like? Okay, we want to make sure that you are doing what you're telling your kids to do. So lead by example first, and then that will give you even more authority to say, hey, look, mommy cleaned my room this morning. It's time for you to clean your room. Here's what I'd like for you to do. Put all of your toys in the toy box and then come back and say, okay, Nina, I did that. What's next? So I give them one instruction at a time, and that works really well with any age. If you give them too long of a list of things to do, or if the job is too overwhelming, they're just going to go in the room and go, I don't even know what to do. I don't know where to start because everything is such a big mess. Okay, so give them clear instructions. Um, here's a bag. Put all of your clothes in this bag. As soon as you're done, bring the bag to me and say, Mommy, what's next? Okay, this is very clear instruction. It works very well. This is all part of obedience training. Okay, 
So expect the same behavior that you do in public as you do at home and vice versa. Expect the same behavior at home that you do in public. For instance, in public, you don't want your children to argue with you. You don't want them to throw a tantrum. In public, you want them to be quickly obedient, right? When you say it's time to go, you want them to go. Sometimes at home, you're too lenient. They'll say it's time, you'll say it's time to go. Everybody just sits there like you didn't say anything at all, <laughs> okay? So uh, let's give clear instruction, expect them to follow through. It's time to go in five minutes. Right now, I want everybody to stand, to turn the TV off. Okay, next, everybody stand up. Next, everybody put on your shoes. I'll be back in one minute to make sure your shoes are on. Okay, give them clear instruction, follow through, give them a step by step. In different ages, it'll be more necessary to break it down, but as they get older, you shouldn't have to break things down so much. But if you need to, then do. Like, don't, don't feel like you shouldn't break things down. It's okay to stay positive, stay clear, giving the clear instruction, and expect the same behavior. So when you're in public and you say, it's time to go, then you're going to have some response because they're used to giving you immediate response when you're at home. Okay, um, when we're at church, I, I would tell the children, okay, when everybody is standing to worship, you stand. When everybody's sitting, you sit. When everybody's clapping, you clap. When everyone's praying, you pray. Okay, so, so you're training your children in a group activity. Well, at home, there also needs to be times when you ch train your children in a group activity. When it's time to come to the table for dinner, everyone comes to the table for dinner. When it's time for everyone to pray, everyone prays. When it's time for everyone to put their napkin on their lap, everyone puts their napkin on their lap. So, so help them to learn to take their cues from you. See, and, and it's a real mistake for you to set the kids down to eat and that keeps them busy while you're cleaning the kitchen. It's really important for you to sit with your children. This is what's going to bond them to you. This is what creates attachment. And this is what will create um, the eye-to-eye, face-to-face conversation. And this is a great place for you to obedience train your children, for you to train them, teach them their manners, okay? And they need to learn to take their social cues from you. And so this is training them in emotional intelligence. This is training them in social awareness, okay? So... Whenever you're training them how to be obedient, be sure that you're training them to take their cues from the person in authority. At school, it will be their teacher. At school, at home, it will be from you or their father or their grandmother, whatever the case may be. But help them to, to recognize who's the authority and to take their social cues from the authority. If the authority is um, asking everybody to do something, then everybody does it. So it doesn't need to be a specific instruction but they need to be able to submit themselves to what the group is doing. And that's all part of obedience training. They will know that if you tell them this, okay? Okay, so um, be consistent with your rules uh, or don't make them at all, okay? So if you have a rule to remove your shoes when you come in the house, maybe you're trying to uh, keep your carpet from getting so dirty. So if your rule is to keep to remove your shoes when you come in the house, the children need to know, and the adults, everybody needs to know, where do we put the shoes? Okay, we need to take them off, but where do we put them? Okay, so there needs to be a designated place. This is where the shoes go. Either they're lined up by the front door, they're put in a basket, they're in the mud room, wherever they are, maybe in the garage, they need to have a designated place. So when they go to put back on their shoes, they know where they are. They haven't left them in the house somewhere. Okay, but if you're going to make that a rule, then that has to be consistent. You do it consistently, they do it consistently. They know why and they know how and it's followed through. Okay, if you don't wanna keep up with that rule, don't make it in the first place. I don't have that rule at my house. We have hardwood floors. It's not important to me that, that the kids or that anybody takes off their shoes when they come into the house. However, if they're going to be putting their feet on the furniture, they have to take off their shoes and that's consistent, okay? And, and they know where to put their shoes. Also, um, we, we don't have a rule of don't eat in the car. Now, some people make that a rule. If that's a rule, you have to do it all the time and be consistent, meaning that you can't eat in the car either, okay? And so if that's gonna be the rule, make sure you can be consistent. If you can't be consistent, 
if there's too many situations that will make things an exception to the rule, then don't make the rule at all, okay? Because otherwise you're undermining your own authority when you do that. All right, so um, whatever you want the rules to be, stay consistent. So you don't wanna have a whole lot of rules, you know, it, it makes it not so much fun, but just be consistent for the rules that are really, really important to you. Uh, one rule that's important to me is popsicles have to be eaten either outside or in the kitchen. Okay, so there's never an exception to that. And uh, so it's consistent and everyone's being trained in that. And then there's always a follow through. Okay, so uh, make your rules the same as your kids' rules. So lead by example, that means that I also can't eat popsicles in the living room, okay? Whatever your rule is, it's gotta stay consistent. Um, uh, same rules for the kids. You know, and I even use this when, when I'm potty training the kids. You know, the rule is you can't go poop in your pants. Okay, so the rule is that we go poop on the toilet. Nina goes poop on the toilet. Everyone goes poop on the toilet. This is the rule for everyone. And so we're obedience training by letting the kids know this is logical and it's just a rule that we all have and that we will all obey, okay? So um, it's important to have these things. These are very important. Okay, so be solid. Your yes means yes and your no means no. Okay, so be careful. Okay, it's okay to say maybe or I'm not sure yet. I need to check, I don't have enough information. But if you say yes, keep your word. And if you say no, keep your word. Okay, that's very important. Um, otherwise, they'll all, your kids will always be arguing with you thinking that they can change your mind. But if you're very solid, then they'll understand. Okay, so allow freedom within boundaries. So here are the boundaries. Um, now I, I said eat popsicles in the kitchen. Okay, so the boundary is the kitchen. But within the kitchen, the older kids have freedom. They can stand up, they can walk around, they can do whatever they want. Now the two-year-old has to sit in the high chair. But there's, there's a boundary of kitchen or outside to eat their popsicles, but there's freedom within that boundary, okay? So I think that's important. With any boundary that you have, there is some freedom within the boundary because um, obedience is never supposed to be harsh or authoritative or mean or cruel is supposed to be, it's meant to help your child actually have more security and it helps us all live more peacefully with each other. Remember, peace and love, those, those are the things that we're going for here. Okay, so back up what you say by giving clear instructions. Okay, change your voice tone when you need to. If you need to be firm, if you need to be direct, that's perfectly fine. That helps your kids know that you're the boss and that you're serious right now. Okay, reward obedience, reward good behavior, and do it right away. If there's anything, the scripture says, if there's anything worthy to be praised, think on these things. So if your child is having a hard time and they've been disobedient a lot, I want you to really, really work on praising them for their obedience because we're so proud of them when they're obedient, right? And I want you to make a big deal out of it. And uh, it's important to do that. You can't praise them too much. It's, it's good to praise them every time they're obedient. I mean, seriously, when you say, everybody get in the car, if they do it right away, boy, when you get in the car, the first thing I want you to say is, well, y'all, you were very obedient today. Thank you so much for getting in the car right when I told you to. I really appreciate that. That was amazing. That honored me and that honored the schedule. I'm so proud of you. Perfect. That's what you want to do. Okay, a few more here. Um, okay, role play the behavior and responses that you desire. So if your children are consistently having a hard time obeying you with a specific task, you want to role play with them. If they're, if they're having a hard time answering you when you tell them to do something like put on your shoes, then I want you to role play and you want, I want you to say, okay, let's switch space, places now. You be the dad or the mom, you tell me, it's time to get your shoes on. And then watch what I do. And then I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna turn the TV off, I'm gonna go over and put my shoes on right away. And, um, and then I'll say, what next? Okay, and they might say, well, you can read a book because we're not leaving for 10 more minutes. Or they might say, get in the car, or I don't know what they're gonna say, but I want you to say, what next? And uh, I think it's important for you to role play. That way they can see and they can visualize what it is that you're expecting from them. I think a lot of times parents have expectations of behavior, but they've never actually told their kids 
what behavior they're expecting. So their child doesn't actually understand. Um, and so you need to show them. And role playing is a really fun way to do that. Okay, treat your child with kindness and respect, okay? So as you're being a firm disciplinarian, as you are really expecting them to be obedient to you, be sure that you're kind, be sure that you're respectful, be sure that you speak with a loving tone of voice. It can be authoritative when it needs to be, but stay loving, stay kind, okay? Never stoop to a place of being cruel, rude, unkind, as the scripture says, provoking your child, okay? Do not provoke your child. That is not God's way. So thank you for uh, paying attention today. I can I can just visualize you guys sitting up straight and taking some notes because I know this is an important topic to you. Obedience training your children is the most important thing that you can learn, but I want you to go ahead and stay with this series because I've got to go all the way to Z. But thank you for joining me every Friday morning here on Life Network for Women. Thank you, Paula White and all the team there. God bless you. Hugs and high fives.